Hey, how's it going? Diamond here. All right, let's take a look into what states the ultimate GUI plugin. And I won't lie, it really lives up to that. So if you guys want a simple way to create GUIs in game without having to worry about a single line of code within your configs or about any mistakes you could have made or how it's gonna look like until you actually finish that code, this plugin can do that for you. Want to know how? Stay tuned for the rest of the video. Sorry if my voice feels a little bit off. Uh, this is my second take of this video. And I must say I am very pleased with this plugin as a far. This is a premium plugin on Spigot, which is called Ultimate GUI. I have one complaint about this plugin, which you will get to know a little more down into the video. It is nothing major at all, but I'm gonna show you guys how to use this plugin and everything I enjoyed about this plugin. Let's get cracking on with this plugin and show you why this is truly the Ultimate GUI plugin. Okay, to get started, what we need to do is one command. So we'll do slash GUI. This will open up the menu and here we can create a GUI. When we create a GUI, we have three options. We have advanced, we can do GUI and we have folder. Clicking advanced, you'll see that there are mostly coming soon. So these are features that are not enabled just yet. So we're gonna set this as basically, it's not even a feature yet, but we do have folders and GUIs. And from the selling point, this is exactly what it needs. We can create folders and have our GUIs all within that folder to keep it organized or you can just create a GUI as of right now. To get started, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just get some stuff from my inventory because it's 100% all inventory based. So I'm gonna get some glass. I'm going to get some cyan glass as well. And with all them grabbed, we can actually start creating our GUI. So I'm just gonna click GUI, really nice feature. You can select how many rows you want just by clicking the numbers right below. So we can do one, two, three, four, five, and six because that's exactly what we're counting here. So each row, so one, two, three, four, and five. So this one will be a five row. I have exactly one, two, three items. So I'm just gonna do five for the sake of this tutorial. Once I click it, it turns green and now we can set the name of the GUI. So I will set this one up as you know it, Ted. And it supports color code, which is really nice. So when we hover over this, you can see Ted. We can set what type it is as well if we want to. So we can create this really custom GUI at the end of the day. So we can set it as enchanting, a dispenser, brewing, or any of these custom GUIs. It is freaking amazing that this is even a feature. Why have I not seen it any sooner? I'm pretty sure deluxe menus can do this. I am yet to test this out, but when it comes to creating it all within a GUI, this is so far the only plugin I've seen do it. But hey, before we do continue this video, if you guys want to check out Revive Node by using the promo code Diamond All Caps, you can get 15% off your very first purchase today. You can start your very own Minecraft server and add this plugin right into it. It's as simple as that. So you can either create a community or just play with friends. It's really up to you. So just make sure to don't miss out because there are always sales happening within Revive. But let's go back into only using rows. We can even set a command for this. So I will do Ted to open up the GUI and then we can click create GUI. So here we go. This is our GUI right here. If we right click it again, we can manage it. We can set the name here. We can set the command. We can manage the display. So manage the GUI. We can preview it and we can delete it. If we really want to manage it, we can just click, we just left click it. Simple as that. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and just decorate it a little bit by just putting some placeholder blocks just in the corners because we're not going to interact with these. These are primarily going to be cosmetic based. So we can do that. And just like that, we have some cosmetic without having to code in with about 50 lines of every single cosmetic item. Now, what we can do is just pop, plop in the items that we want. So we have the diamond, we have the golden apple, and I will put this carrot, and you'll see what, we do, what we're gonna do with every single one of them. Now we have them in here, you might say like, okay, now what? We just have a bunch of items in the GUI. Since you right click them, you can see we can really customize what they do. First, we have set flags. We have set display, set the name, lore, enchantments, clicks. This is coming soon, I, I don't know what's coming soon is so that kind of puts me on edge but we have animations and then we can delete it or go back so at the moment you can see it's just a simple diamond with nothing to see let's go ahead and just set a display name we'll call this one free diamonds and we'll just give it a white font or white color and let's go ahead and just set a name for it so this one i'm just gonna do free diamonds we can set the display but however we don't want that i accidentally did click it uh to do that i'm just gonna remove it and just add a diamond back so just by adding the diamond back we can go ahead and right click and do the same process all over again so by clicking enter you can see free diamond all caps because it supports all those methods now we can do is come here into lore we can add a lore you'll see the lore editor here and let's go ahead and just add some lore we can do seven because I want it to be gray. Hey kid, want some free? This is gonna be way too long, so I'm gonna stop it here. I'm gonna click enter and we can hover over here and say, hey kid, want some free? And we can add another line to finish it off. Diamonds, 
question mark. And as you can see, I didn't like that because it's white. I messed up. So what I'm going to do is I can select which line I want. So I currently, as you can see the green, I am on the second line, but I can select the top one. And now I can manage that top one, but I need to go back down to the second one and just remove that line, add a new line and just replace it with the text I want. Hey kid, want some free diamonds? Simple as that. So if I hover over the item, this is exactly what it's going to look like and say. Now we can go ahead and just click add, but now we can go back. And as you can see here, we keep all the information saved. We can set enchantments if we want to. So we go to the next page. I don't know, infinity, go back. Let's go ahead and set flags, hide enchantments. So if we didn't click this, you can see that it will say infinity. But if we click this, it will still keep the glare effect, but we will not see any of the enchantments, which is super nice. We can hide attributes. So if this had any custom attributes, we can hide it as well. However, it doesn't. We can make it unbreakable. Well, we can hide the unbreakable tag. We can hide destroys. We can hide placed on all those features. We can just simply hide. But now we can get into the clicks. So the set clicks, we're gonna come here and then we're going to set the type. So this is going to be a left click. I can just click that, click confirm. Then I can set the requirement. I don't want any requirements, but for the sake of permissions, I'm going to. So the requirement is going to be permission based. You can also set it up as a cost, which I don't want to, which I'm not gonna do. And as you can see here, I can now set up the permission. So I'm gonna do diamond, I'm gonna do ted.diamond. Now we can click enter. And as you can see right there, we have the permission ted.diamond. So if they have this permission, they can use this item or command, however you wanna specify it. Click create and click create. And now we can see we have the permission all set up. Let's set up the action. We can set the action type. So we'll do give item and we'll click confirm. Now we can set up the item we want. I need to grab the item I want. Go back into the menu, right click this, and then we can set up the command again, action type, give item, confirm, and then just click this. As you can see, it's gonna give me a diamond as the data right there. Click confirm or create. And that's all we need to do. Set click, we're done. Nothing else. We can add multiple clicks if we want to, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're only gonna do that one. Now we have one item done. We can delete it if we want. I accidentally clicked this, but now you can see what happens if you do. I don't wanna delete it. However, we're gonna click back and now we have one item done. Let's go ahead and finish the rest. I need a break here, my voice is dying. Let's go ahead and go with the golden apple now. Let's go ahead and right click it. I am going to set some enchantments to this. I'm gonna go back, remove the enchantment so no one can see it. I'm gonna set the name and I will set this as, I don't know what color this is and just say extra help. Click enter, let's add a lore to it and we'll just click add. So I just added my lore, it's gonna be really simple. It's just shift plus right click, get extra help. With that, I'm actually going to just save this and we can set up the command for it. So set clicks, we're going to add a click and here we're going to set the type, which is going to be shift left. We need shift right, but I believe I did do left click. So just confirm, I'm gonna set that up. And now we are not gonna add any permissions. We can just click set click, which I forgot to set the action. So now we're gonna do set the action. Let's do the action type. And here we're going to do run command, click confirm. And then we're going to set the command. For that, we'll do heal. And we are done with that. Now we can do is click create and set click. Simple as that. And we can go back. However, it was shift right. I'm actually gonna go back in there and fix that, but it's super easy. I can go in here, click this, click type, and I need to click shift right. So I can easily fix it without having to do any hard modifications to it. Now let's go back into the UI. Now we're gonna work with this item, I'm gonna go ahead and right click it. And here I can do is set an animations type for it. So set animations, we're gonna go to frame one. I'm not gonna worry about the name. You can customize each individual name for the item. I'm not gonna do that for the sake of tutorial purposes and how long this video is gonna do. So I'm just gonna set the name as test one. And as you can see here, carrot test one. So it's gonna be test one for the first frame. And then I can click set frame. I can go to the next one. I can do the same thing and I can do test two. And now it's set as test two. Set that frame, add another frame. And and then we can do test three. Now we can set that frame. So currently, as you can see right there, it's changing as doing test. Well, it's gonna do carrot, test one, test two, test three, and it's gonna go for that looping cycle. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually go into the first one. I'm gonna click that again. And here, what I'm going to do is change it to a random item. So I'm gonna right click material. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click the frame one. And here, as you can see, it's a head. That's because I just set it as the custom data value. I can actually go into a link which is provided on the page. I'm just gonna set that as a mushroom head. I can just set its Minecraft URL the value and now it will switch from that into the mushroom head. So as you can see here, it's switching test one, test two, three, carrot, mushroom, test one. And that's simple as that, but there we go. Now we are done. I'm gonna go ahead and click back and I'm not gonna run any fantasy commands. I'm just showing off that it is possible to set animations easily with this. I'm done here. I don't need to do anything else. What we're gonna do now is slash GUI reload. And what that is doing is enabling the command that we just created for that GUI. So by just running slash test, 
head, a mini will pop up. I'm actually going to go ahead and just clear my inventory and just open it up again. Now, as you can see here, we have everything. We have the rotation items that do absolutely nothing but clear, clear the cosmetics and animations. We have the cosmetics itself that do absolutely nothing as well. And then we have the two items. I'm going to go in survival here so we can see. I have way too many hearts for some reason, but we can do Ted. We can shift plus right click this. And as you can see, I have been healed. If I click it, middle click it, anything like that, it will not work especially middle click will not work in survival as from 1.18 and above middle click only works if you are in creative mode at least that's what it states in docs so be aware of it now if we right click this nothing happens and that would be correct because if i go in here and i set the check the click types this is more of my mistake and i set it you can see it doesn't give me any item because i have not specified it yet so now it should give me a diamond click create click set simple as that and we can go ahead and just click on ted but now if we actually click on the diamond as you can see i get free diamonds Simple as that. If I click with anything else, it doesn't work and everything else just works as it's supposed to. I can get healed with this and I can look at some wacky animations with this one. This is really nice and super simple the way I can just create a GUI all in game without having to worry or mess up any lines of code within a config. But hey, that was the plugin right. Hope you guys liked that video. It was super simple. And overall, I just wanted to share this plugin that I found with you guys. Give some props to the developer as he created something quite honestly clean and with the GUI and with the custom GUIs, simply unique. Other than that, I'm not gonna take any more of your time. You have an amazing day and I will see you guys next time. Cheers.